Next, we're going to look at numbering your participants, and by this I mean applying a bib number. Now, in many circumstances, this one included, it's not going to be a physical bib number, but the athletes do need to be given a unique number for the match so we can look up the results. Uh, as you can see, I loaded them in with a number or ID already assigned, so you, um, you can just clear this using the clear numbers button at the bottom. So we'll just wait for that to load through. There we go. So they've all been cleared now. You can see none of them have numbers. So for the numbering system, ordinarily you just choose unique and automatic. You can apply it for, uh, for the gender. So you would have a 1-F, 1-M, and then the same for age group, the same for category. Um, and then you can just choose your order. So standard one would be order one, alphabetical on last name. And then if you have any duplicates, you could go on first name or date of birth. But a lot of track and field events might do short sprints first, so it's easier for the judges um, or the officials to, to spot the shorter numbers, um, so they get those on the quicker events. So I'll just go alphabetical on first name, and then alphabetical on first name. Uh, similarly, if you're doing physical numbers, you can specify a number range available if you've ordered a specific lot. Uh, for, in this instance, I'm just going to do 1 plus. And then I click save and apply and it will um, give all of those numbers to those 14 competitors. Now, if you add more at a later date and do this again, it will just assign new numbers to the new lot. It won't rework everybody. So if you want to, uh, if you add more competitors and then you want to get everybody in alphabetical order, you'll need to clear them first and then redo it all.